Hey everyone, welcome to a tutorial where we break down how we created some of our systems in our online co-op puzzle game, Puzzle Compound. As a puzzle game, one of the core mechanics that we had to build was a system that would handle players interacting with objects. I mean, what would a puzzle game be without pressing buttons, picking up things, and stuff like that? Because of that, we needed a robust system for handling interactions, and that's what this video is about. To start out with, we create a base object called BP underscore interactable object, which will be extended by everything the player needs to interact with. Go ahead and add a static mesh to the object so the player can see something in the world. Make sure that you set the object to replicate. In that object, we will have an interactive event that takes in a player character and a function can interact, which will take in a player character and return a boolean. For now, have it set to return true. We'll get back to these later. Like with most gameplay, the origin of the interact system comes from player input. Open your character blueprint and create a new event called server interact. You want to make this a reliable server call in the replication properties. You need to do this because since players don't own the interactable objects, the server needs to execute calls for them. This event will take in an interactable object, call its can interact function, and then its interact event if it returns true. Next, when the player presses the input button, we perform a line trace in front of the player camera using its forward vector. If an interactable object is found, we call its can interact method to verify that the player can actually interact with it. We then call a server custom event on the player telling them to interact with that interactable object by calling its interact event. With the player sorted out, let's take a look at the interactable object. We have its interact event, but let's create a couple of other pieces of blueprint code. First, let's create a couple functions, handle interaction server and handle interaction local, both of which take the player that is interacting with the object. These are functions to make it easier to override for individual child interactable objects. Next, let's create two events which will take in the player as a parameter, server interact and multicast interact, which are set to the appropriate replicates option and are both set to reliable. Now, to people who may be familiar with UE networking, you may detect some red flags there on the reliable multicast. For those who aren't aware, these are actually a bit of a no-no in UE development. I remember actually seeing a video where some UE devs were even mentioning that there's a debate at Epic to even include the option to do reliable multicast because of some potential issues it could cause for some games. To explain things simply, Reliable events basically means pushing that event to the front of the line no matter what to make sure that the receiver gets the event, but that in turn means that other things are delayed or could be lost. This isn't as much of an issue for players contacting the server. After all, when players do things, you want to make sure that the server is aware, as it can feel bad if a player tries to do something and it doesn't actually happen. But if the server does that constantly to all players, it means other important things can be delayed or lost. The more proper way is to use replicated variables, which are only synced periodically. We didn't learn this until far into development, but even then, for our system, we figured this would be the best option anyway. Unlike something like firing a gun, players aren't going to be interacting with objects frequently or rapidly. Also, because the game is designed to be played with friends over a voice call, we wanted to make sure that all players could see the events close to the same time as possible. For your own projects, you should consider whether reliable multicast or replicated variables are best suited for your needs based on importance, frequency of occurrence, and other factors. Back into the blueprint code, the interact event calls the server interact event, which first checks to make sure that the player can interact with it before calling the handle interaction server function and then multicast interact. Multicast interact then calls the handle interaction local. For the can interact function, it simply returns a Boolean variable called can player interact by default, but this of course can be overridden by child interactable objects if needed. You may wonder why we have two different versions of the handle interaction function. The reason we do that is something that you'll want to keep in mind in general when it comes to multiplayer games. For handling logic and completion scenarios, you want to do that in the handle interaction server. This is good not only for preventing cheating, but it also helps prevent edge cases from desync where one player may think a puzzle is solved where another may not. 
This makes the server the source of truth, basically. However, for visual effects, sound effects, and things like that, you can override the handle interaction local so they can happen on all player devices. And that's the basics of the system. You can then create a lot of different child objects of the interactable object to do different things by overriding the handle interaction functions. For example, one object can change its size and another can move when interacted with. With more complex logic, one could check for certain conditions to see if a puzzle condition has been met. Another could allow the player to pick it up. You can also modify this framework to pass information from the server to the player to change what happens for local players or pass information from the player to the server based on details like what component on the object the line trace for the player hit. I hope you found this video instructive. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Thanks for watching and have a good day.